on the recording on and also i need to check like if there's any students in youtube channel because we do use a youtube to communicate with each other and sometimes there are these you know comments through the youtube chat window and yeah that's something that i don't see at the moment but i will see it momentarily so okay. just a second just a second now um a little bit about the crown rules i would like to propose to to go such that uh, please do not use a chat window here in the teams and the reason being that my settings will be modified if you put something in a chat window so if you want to have a comment during the presentation just open your mic and say okay okay Arne, excuse me professor Schwab, can i can i please ask this and then uh, then uh, we can communicate and is it Arne, okay excuse me professor Schwab, if we are communicating during the presentation or would you absolutely I, I i i enjoy i enjoy the questions in between and and so on my experience however from the uh, lecturing with zoom is that it's very hard for me always to to give a presentation and watch a chat. So yep. I always have like a, a chat officer, and I think <laughs> I got that from a colleague in Finland. I have a chat officer who, ke who keeps an eye on the chat and then sometimes yells in my ear, like, hey, there's a question <laughs> from uh, Johannes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, would you accept me to be your uh, chat officer? That would be great. Dr. Okay, so I can put it in my CV. 2021 chat officer visiting yeah. lecture <laughs> okay yeah. great progress. Progress. nice yeah. okay one more almost good to go i just need to see uh here I'm, i want to see how is uh, streaming how it look like i'm going to be there momentarily because i want to also monitor the quality of the streaming so uh, so i'm not yet there so it's still uploading that page to me uh, it's coming for some reason a little slow. So I'm going to share a screen where the presentation and me is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And okay. By I the see. way, yeah, okay. I'm still using OBS because then I have this nice green screen thing. Which <laughs> yeah, yeah, of so course. I, I still can do a recording on my computer also. Okay. Well, that would be great. I see that the connection, YouTube connection is excellent. So it's, um, as far as I can see, all good. So can I introduce uh, Professor Aaron Swa? Uh, you know, the title Absolutely. of the press, you know, the title of the presentation was mentioned to be life and bicycling. And I think that this is uh, describing well, what is about uh, that we're gonna learn today. So we, of course, there's gonna be the technical matter about the bicycling but it's much more than that. It's way beyond that. There Thank are you. awesome stories which I'm, you know, I'm here having some snacks, a little bit yeah. of coffee with me. So I'm gonna take yeah. a full advantage of this. This is like being in a movie theater, in oh, a good movie. <laughs> so <laughs> so I hope that you two are enjoying. This is gonna be a lot of fun. And now, please, if you have any comments, any questions, just open your mic and shoot it. Alternatively, you can uh, put your comments to uh, our YouTube channel, so I keep on monitoring the comments through the YouTube channel. But please do not use a chat window here in uh, Teams because that's going to mess up my settings. So with that, uh, my oh, so that's go ahead. Uh, just a small uh, feedback. I'm just happy to see Aaron Sharp using the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should, you, Three you guesses whom it come, came from. Yeah, yeah. Aki, he was yeah, telling me the story. So uh, now my good friend Aaron Sharp and life and bicycles, so please. I'm gonna mute so, myself now. And I have to do nothing now, Aki? Yeah, you Can just I, go, you just go. I just go. So um, you're, you are happy you see my, my my which screen do you, you see my screen, you see my presentation? Uh, okay, so we do or have do a problem. We don't see your no. presentation. Okay, no, no, then I'll, uh, sorry, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to share. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, screen one. No, no, that's wrong. Oh, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, yeah it's coming. Uh, no, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong one. Uh, how do I get back? Ah. Uh, you just share again, I guess. 
Let's share it again. The content screen here. I need this guy. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's a. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what you're doing there. Okay. So you want to have yeah, this kind of view. Okay. So let me let me do a little bit of settings here. Yeah. To, exactly. to make yeah, sure that, that it is. No, this is a. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna make your your screen a bit bigger. Exactly. So hold on. So we are almost there. No, I think yeah. it is this corner and yeah. this corner. No, I still made, need to make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, still I, a bit I, bigger, I, still a bit bigger. I'm almost there. I, I, I'm uh, sorry, okay, but I couldn't get rid of all the controls <laughs> underneath. Okay, okay. Now it's a... Uh, now, it, as far as I can see, it looks really, really perfect. So, again, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to check this from the YouTube channel to see that the streaming is okay. And if there's any any problem, yes. I will let you know. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Aki. Thank you for the very kind introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to to give a presentation, although it's a super bummer that I'm not in Finland. Uh, I'm sitting here at home looking out my window. It's a sunny, sunny day here in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, it's a bit strange, but uh, on the other hand, I'm very happy that I can talk a little bit about uh, uh, yeah, life and cycling, or as I say, art and science in bicycling, because it's it's not only, not only about science, but, but also about art. I mean, cycling is also a form of art. Um, my name is Arend Schwab. I run the uh, Bicycle Dynamics Lab at uh, Delft University of Technology. And uh, I hope in the next 45 minutes to take you along on this nice ride. Okay. Well, the motto of this talk is that everybody knows how a bicycle is constructed, right? It's two wheels and a steering assembly. But yet nobody really fully understands the operation. And by the operation, I mean questions like, oh, uh, how do you stay upright? How do you balance? How do you go around the corner? How do you do, how do you can even... Uh, cycle backwards, or uh, those kind of questions. Uh, well, to, to answer those questions, uh, we did a lot of research, but I, I didn't do it on my own. This was work done uh, with colleagues and friends. If I hadn't had these friends, I wouldn't be where I am now. So, uh, first of all, there's a whole list from, from the TU Delft, of course, but also from Cornell University. Now, why Cornell? Because the research started in the US and not at Delft, not in the Netherlands. You would say, oh, Netherlands, all bikes and so No, started at Cornell University when I had a sabbatical year there. And from there, I got contact with UC Davis, uh, a sports engineering people and biomechanics. And one of them, Jason Moore, is now in our bike lab at Delft. So he made the move from the US to Delft because, well, Delft is the center of bicycling science, right? There are two key publications if you're interested in reading more about cycling, uh, science and art, and that's uh, the first one is this 2007 paper uh, uh, by the Proceedings of the Royal Society, and I could say we're among good authors because it is the journal where Isaac Newton published. And it's about linearized dynamics equations for the balance and steer. And I will, you will say, mm, okay, well, that's pretty old already, more than 100 years. Yes, but it's interesting. I will take you on that one for a second. The second one is about uh, 2011, and that's in science. And I was so happy that finally we could publish in science something on, on a bicycle, because before that time, when I talked about bicycling science, they said, well, man, forget it. Bicycles, they're more than 100 years old. That's not interesting. You have to do nanotechnology, spin scripts, whatever, virus research things. And yes, of course, those things are interesting. However, it turns that in the, in the daily use of a bicycle, we sort of lost to understand how the thing works and, and why. And that, that resulted in a lot of myth and myth concepts. Anyway, uh, those publications you can easily find on my website if you type my name, Arendt Schwab which for me is not so difficult, maybe it's a little bit harder, but you'll find my name somewhere. And if you type it, you come to my website, everything is there. You can download all papers. Okay, let's start with some observations. We're real scientists, so we're gonna look, okay, what's going on in cycling? And here I, I share with you a piece of a movie. 
It's called, uh, it's really for old people. It's uh, Jour de Fête by Jacques Tati from 1949. Um, I was not yet born then, but anyway. And you see a bicycle staying upright by itself. And of course, people thought, oh, that's movies, man. In movies, it's all tricks. But it turns out that, that that's not a trick. I mean, you can go to a car park and you can take any bike and you can push it forward, give it some speed, and it will stay upright. And some people will say, oh, yeah, that's the gyroscopic thing on the wheels or that's the momentum of the bicycle. So there were all kind of explanations for why that is. Well, we were rather skeptic, like, well, of course, it slows down and then will fall. Um, but it's not only stable, you can also hit it sideways and then it starts oscillating and then the oscillation dies out. So, and, and we, as mechanical engineers, we know this dying oscillation as, as a damped oscillation. But if you look at the bike, you think, well, where is the damping? And I mean, there is not so much damping going on. Eh? If, you, if you look at, at the video, and let's, let's go back again. If you look at the video, then the damping is really, or eh, the, the, the decay of the oscillation is just serious. So where is all that damping? Anyway, we're trying to address that too. Of course, bicycles are very old, as I said, have more than 100 years. And here you see a nice evolutionary picture starting from the, from the hobby horse where you propel by your feet. Then, uh, well, there, there is a gene in people. I don't know how the gene is called, but it's called fast. So everything you do in life, at any time you think, oh, I want to go faster. And that was the same with cycling. So people wanted to go faster. So what did they do? they mounted pedals and then they could pedal. But with the pedals, they wanted to go fast. So well, since your legs can do only a certain speed, well, you can go faster because there is a transmission ratio. If you make the wheel larger, you go very fast, right? But there's a limit to this and it has something to do with the anthropomorphic sizes of people like leg length and so on. And you cannot make the wheel larger. So suddenly there's a jump in evolution and that's why I call it evolution. There's a jump in evolution and we get a chain drive. But notice that it's really evolution because the big front wheel is still there. And then suddenly somebody comes to the conclusion, oh, we don't need that big front wheel. And he demonstrates it by making a small wheel. Well, in the end, then we're here, we're 1890, you're 1890. Eh? Uh, we are at the, what we call now safety bike, eh? the bike we see outdoors. If you look outdoor, your bike will look probably like this. Two equal sized wheels. Pneumatic tires, the chain drive, and, and that's that's the bike of today still. So you would think there's not much after that, but I will hope to show you there is. To understand that operation, we engineers make models. And uh, as Einstein said, we want to make a, a, sim a simple model, but not too simple. It should be very, all, all the, the superfluous details should be go away and the basic things should be there. So in our assumptions for our model, and when we want to analyze why does it things stay upright. Uh, we do the rigid bodies, uh, as your multi-body dynamic course, most of those rigid bodies. Uh, we fix the rider to the rear frame. We do hands-free operation, uh, no control. Uh, we do everything symmetric about the, the vertical plane, and we like that, that makes it simple. We have nice, uh, knife edge wheel, so there's only point, point, point contact in front and the rear. Uh, there's no slip, eh? it's ideal rolling, no side slip. Uh, uh, we, we drive on flat level ground, there's no friction or propulsion. And if you add up all these elements of these of these multi-body system with uh, rigid bodies and constraints, then the conclusion is that uh, you have three velocity degrees of freedom. Uh, you can lean with the thing, you can steer with the thing, and it can move forward. Eh? It can lean, you can steer, you can have a forward speed. So three degrees of freedom. But also note that this system is energy conservative. Eh? Uh, and that is interesting because we saw a damped oscillation and it's energy conservative. How does that work? Well, of course, the, the bicycle has three degrees of freedom, but it has a lot of parameters, eh? 25 parameters, like the wheelbase, the trail, the steer x tilt, uh, the, um, the radius of the wheel, the mass, the mass moments of inertia. So if you add them all up, you have 25 bicycle parameters, meaning that the whole family of bicycles is large eh? by, by, by adjusting all these 25 parameters. You can have all kinds of bikes. And that's true. Um, the, 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 um, uh, sorry. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, 
and that's true, of course. Um, the the you, you can see all kind of bikes. The normal bikes you see a lot, but you also have recumbent bikes, or you see more is more flat, or you have the, these folding bikes, or well, whatever. There's a whole family. Of then, if we take this model, you can derive uh, equations of motion. And uh, well, it looks intimidating, but it's not. It's just mass times acceleration is forces. And these forces, which are usually on the other side of the equation, I pushed on this side. And the forces are like uh, gravitational forces. And these are forces because you go into corners, eh, where sometimes we call them centrifugal forces. And these look like damping forces. Eh? They're, they're, they're linear in the speeds, eh? in the lean and the steer rate. Uh, and, um, but but they they, they yeah they have a strange structure so they, they are asymmetric but not completely so there's a symmetric and asymmetric part so it looks like they're damping but there is no damping so what's going on well anyway linearized equations for three degrees of freedom lean steer and forward speed lean is two second order differential equation and in a linear approximation the bicycle has constant forward speed yeah? so it's just then we can we can separate in this special case the upright forward motion. We can separate the, the lateral motions from the forward motions. Here you see some numbers for uh, some some mass, uh, the, this strange damping thing, some gravitation, some stiffness from gravity, and and some well stiffness from well, forces going into circles. Uh, order of magnitude. So for leaning, you have 130 uh, uh, for inertia uh, because these are radians per second squared, so this mass moments of inertia. And then for steering, that's a lot lower. So there's a, a, an order of a, a, a thousand uh, order difference. Why? Well, because uh, rotating the steering assembly it takes, takes very less effort mass-wise, whereas the whole or rotating the whole bike a lot. Then gravitational stiffness, so this is mass times gravity, so the total mass of the system is about 100 kilograms times 10 is minus, and it's unstable, right, it fall over, so that's minus 10. And for the steering, it can be plus or minus here. Anyway, this is a way to look at the equation, but the other more interesting way is, of course, to look at the eigenvalues and eigenmotions, because then you can see is the lean uh, and the steer, is it stable or unstable? So we determine characteristic equation, we get a fourth order polynomial, right? we have two second order differential equations. And as a parameter, if forward speed is interesting, so as a parameter of forward, being forward speed, we then look at that stability. So go back. Uh, sorry, guys. My Presentation is uh, stopping for some reason. Okay, go back, go back, go back. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, if we look at uh, this model, as I said, we look at the eigenvalues as a, as a function of forward speed here. We uh, uh, the forward speed is in the range of zero to ten meters per second, so that's zero to uh, 36 kilometers per hour. Then here we see the eigenvalues, and then here we, we see clearly that the real parts, in this case being uh, blue, right, because we have imaginary name, being oscillations, and the real part being the damping, or, or positive is, you know, it's, it's growing. But so uh, with the positive uh, eigenvalues, we have an unstable system. But as you see, with speed increases, these positive eigenvalues decrease and become zero. And here we have a region where all real parts of the eigenvalues are less than zero, so negative, meaning here we have stable motions, and the red one is oscillation, right? the imaginary part, so here we have apparently stable oscillation. So yes, this very simple model already predicts that from a certain speed on, the bicycle can be self-stable right? without any control. And yes, it also predicts at low speed it's unstable, well, that's what we would expect. Right? Then we go on. Let's look at the case where we are at the unstable speed. Here I have a simulation, and that's exactly what happens when you learn how to ride a bike. You go too slow, uh, you start oscillating, and then you fall over, right? Let's do it again. So here's the bike. I have its forward speed. I push it sideways. It starts oscillating. Oh, this was the next one, sorry, this one. I push it forward, lateral push, and then it starts oscillating. 
Okay, you already have a peak of view. The next one, now I take the stable forward speed. I do the same experiment, push it forward, hit it sideways. And this is exactly what you saw on the car part with the yellow bar. Uh, it, it oscillates, but the oscillation dies out and it comes back up again. So clearly stable. So yes, a budget can be self-stable. And uh, we see this also in a bike, right? We see this oscillation. And then the big question is, where does the energy go? Because the energy should be conservative, right? Well, it turns out we have, of course, linearized equations, and they do not capture the nonlinear part. And of course, in a, in a second order way, these lateral, the energy of these lateral motions is transferred to the forward motion. And that is clearly seen in this graph here, where we see the oscillation of the lean and the steer angle, which die out. And then here I have plotted the forward speed, and then you see the forward speed, which the, this is the scale, starts at 4.6, and it increases and goes down again. And then the settling value is a little bit higher than the initial value, meaning that the energy from this lateral motion is pushed into this forward motion. We also see Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, slow in, slow speaking or slow slides. <laughs> speak oh, okay yeah i can yeah that's good for uh, yeah for non-native speakers I'll, I'll i'll try and turn down my speaking speed Okay, thank you, Aki. I will continue and try to speak a bit slower, which means that I will skip some slides to get to uh, my end point after 45 minutes where I want to arrive. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. There's little mathematics here, Aki, so. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, so I was talking about uh, uh, energy conservation. We saw a damped oscillation uh, and then and then I, I said, well, well, where does the energy go? And here I explained it goes in the forward motion. You see the oscillation of the lateral motions die out. And then you see the forward speed increasing a little bit, eh? the scales on the right. And why? how do we see that it's a second order effect? Because here we see an oscillation with a certain period. And the, here we see that the forward speed is has an oscillation which has twice the frequency and, that's a, uh, and that means, of course, it's a, it's a nonlinear effect in, in a linear system, because if you have some frequency in a linear system, then everything is within that frequency, right, uh, for a forcing. Uh, so here the, the frequency is doubled, meaning that there is the square of these terms end up here. And that makes, of course, all sense. 
Anyway, uh, let's continue. Bicycle cell stability. The big question is, of course, um, how 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 does a bike stay upright? But to be honest, that is a very complex question. And I try to do a simpler question as to how do we balance a bicycle? Because then you think, oh yeah, I do this or I do that. Well, usually I ask the audience and say, okay, what do you do to balance your bike? And then all kinds of, of answers are given, but it turns out that it's not so clear. Everybody has some idea, but don't know exactly what. So again, that's a too difficult question. Let's move on to the next one. Even simpler one is, a bicycle is like an inverted pendulum thing, right? So the, you can also say, well, okay, but how do how do we balance then a bicycle, uh, a, a pendulum on on, on a uh, like an inverted pendulum? So here I have an inverted pendulum, and it's a bit short. I should have a longer one. I used to have a longer one. I cannot find it now. Anyway. How do we balance that? Well, when the thing is falling, so when it's falling to this side, I quickly move my hand on an instrument. And if it's falling to this side, I quickly move my hand. And that's the way how I balance a stick on my hand. Now, you would like to do the same, of course, in a bicycle, but then you have to move the earth because you have to move these, these support points, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we cannot, but in a bicycle, we have a steering assembly. And if the bike is moving forward and if we turn our handlebars, then the contact points will move. So if you're riding and you, and you, you steer, for instance, uh, to the left, then your contact points will move to the left. And if you steer to the right, your contact points will move to the right. So, okay, that is the way how we can move our contact points. Yeah? And along with moving our hand. Uh, and that is the way how we balance our bike. Now, you would say, hold on, meaning that if it falls to the left, I have to move my hand to the left. And in a bike, if I fall to the left, I have to steer to the left. That sounds a bit strange, right? A bit counterintuitive. Well, anyway, to demonstrate that that's really the way it goes. Uh, here we have a student, they have to do projects. Joop was late, he built uh, with Lego Mindstorms, he built not a robot, but a, a motorbike because he was a bicycle, motorcycle enthusiast. And he thought, well, I know how to control it. Well, it didn't work. Uh, this is Lego Mindstorms with a controller, a sensor, and motors for the and steering. The thing didn't work. His whole idea about steering and balance didn't work. And he was expressed with time, he wanted to go to Switzerland for an internship. And then somebody said, well, she should go to Schwab. He's at the bike lab. He knows a little bit about uh, balancing. I said, well, well you, it's very simple. You have to, uh, to steer into the fall. So hey, if you fall to the left, you steer to the left, fall to the right, steer to the right. And in your case, you have a DC motor probably for steering, right? a small electric motor. So my controller would be the steer motor voltage, which is about the torque, right? And uh, times the, the lean rate. Eh? The lean rate tells you how, that you're falling over, the process of falling. And then it can be 8 or minus 8 or 80 or, or, or minus 80. I don't know. You have to tinker a little bit with it. Um, and then and that should work. And then you looked at me and said, yeah. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, that's only one line of code in my controller. I said, yeah, okay. And then, well, I said nothing and he just went away. I think 10 minutes later, he came back with this video. And I think this is mo the one most beautiful demonstration of how do you balance a bike? Well, to, you steer into the fall. And it, this is exactly what we also see if we do a slow motion yeah, of the experiment in the car park. The bicycle is falling over, and when it falls over, it steers in that direction. So it falls to the left, then it steers to the left. And by that process of after falling steering, it stays, it comes up right again. Now, you would say, yeah, but how does it know that how much and at what time it has to steer? Well, and that is, of course, the big enigma of. You have to do it at the right moment, and you have to do it the right amount. Right? If you steer too much, you will probably fall. If you steer too late or too early, you also will fall. That is, of course, the whole crux of the thing. And people thought about, okay, how does that work then? Which mechanism makes that thing steer? And most people say, well, that's obvious, right? That's the gyroscopic effect of the wheel. And uh, if you have like a wheel, uh, like a, some, some sort of a bike, 
if you have your wheel then and you see oh this front wheel this is rotating oh yeah it's like a gyroscope because the wall that always wants to keep its, its place into space and when uh, when it's rotating about this axis and then you tilt it then it will also start steering right uh yeah maybe maybe uh well, you can write without hands, maybe that's the thing. And that, but other people said, no, 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 no. That this is a tiny effect. The most important thing is how the steer geometry is made. So you have a steer axis which is tilted, and then the contact point is a little bit about this steer uh, behind the steer axis, meaning that there's this arm which we call the trail, and that all the contact forces also exert a torque around this uh, around this axis. Yeah? The lateral tire forces. Uh, but also, if you lean the bike, the normal tire force, they all exert torques due to this contact point being off this descent line. Well, there are the, these two people, and yeah, sure. Gyroscopic effect, the first one, that was done by uh, by uh, uh, Klein and Sommerfeld. And I always say these are half gods. These people, they, they live up there somewhere. I mean, uh, they, they Klein and Sommerfeld from 1910, Klein is from Pimps from the Klein Bottle, Sommerfeld 81 times nominated for the Nobel Prize. They wrote a four-part book, and every, every part is like this on gyroscopes. And in part four, they do applications, and everywhere where they look, they see, of course, the gyroscope. So also in the bicycle. And then uh, Fritz Neuter, brother of Emmy Neuter, wrote especially that part on the bicycle. They, they knew their classics, so they knew about the Whipple model, uh, and, and they say, well, an interesting contribution is here, the gyroscopic effect, and we will demonstrate that if you kill the gyroscopic effect, then the whole bike will be unstable. Uh, uh, no, no gyroscopic effect, and they go into math, as you can see, and nice mathematical equations. Well, it turns out that um, they're a bit like students still, because they make errors, and or you could turn it around. You could say, well, even uh, everybody make, can make a small error, right? Professors, but also students, everybody, it's human. So you always have to check your work because it turns out that in these equations, there are two minus signs here. And it turns out to be those have to be plus signs if you follow the derivation. And actually, my, my friend and colleague, Jaap Meijert, is very good at that. I'm not so good at it, but he's very good. He, he discovered those sign errors. And then, uh, if you then follow the reasoning, it's not so clear that the gyroscopic effect helps. Okay, let's go to the second uh, group of people saying, no, 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 it's the whole steering geometry, right? You have this steering axis, the vertical steering, so you have this trail. And by that, it will, it, 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 it will balance itself. Jones, who was a PhD in chemistry from uh, Cambridge, he, he, um, he wrote a paper on the stability of the bicycle where he knew his classics. He knew about this uh, Klein and Sommerfeld and gyroscopic effect. He built a bike where he had a counter rotating wheel to, to kill the gyroscopic effect. And then he said, Well, uh, look, mommy, I even can ride with that hand. So the contribution of that gyroscopic effect is not so large. But then he also built bikes where the trail was either rather large or negative. And then there was a dramatic change. So he went to an analysis to show that this trail is important for stability. And however, the analysis is, is built on potential energy and, and the potential, uh, only potential energy, and the potential energy by itself is not enough to describe a moving bike, right? So if we then correct his whole analysis by adding a dynamic term, it's again not clear if the trail is the thing which makes itself stable. So we come back to the question then, why does the bike step steer to the fall by itself? If it's not gyro, if it's not trail, what is the, the, uh, the thing? To do that, we look at the bike. Well, the bike is in itself not so complex, two wheels and a steering assembly. But if you go through the motion of the equations, two second order, four matrices, every matrix, matrix entry, a function of 25 parameters, you form one polynomial, fourth order, then you do the Ruth Hurwitz stability criteria, which is six criteria which you have to uh, fulfill. Then if you write that out, you can paint the wall of La Paranta University with all that paper. Yeah. And it, it's undoable to solve it. So what are we going to do? We're going to make it very simple in, in the spirit of Einstein. So we say, well, let, let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need. And let's make a very simple bike where all the necessary elements are. So 
it's two frames and a steering assembly, clearly. Uh, let's forget about the wheel, so we do not do any gyro. Let's forget about the trail. We do not do any trail, eh? a zero trail. So the things like gyro and trail are gone. And we will demonstrate that this bike with the simple parameters, which is now an eight non-zero parameter bike, can be self-stable. We went into the analysis. Now the analysis is simple. Everything is manageable. All the conditions are on one piece of paper. Uh, and for the from that one piece of paper, you can then derive that if the front mass is in this region, the thing should be self-stable. Now it could be, of course, that this is about small numbers, uh, and and that the yeah, practical that the practical stability is not there. So um, uh, stable without gyro or or, or trail effect, yeah, maybe for small numbers. So first, let's check in a in a real nonlinear multi-body dynamic analysis. If it's not about small numbers, and then so we built the thing in the computer, and it's it's not about small numbers. You can really hit it sideways, and it comes back up. And then the next challenge was, of course, can we build it? So we build the thing. It's a bit difficult to put point masses in the air, but we built some nice light construction around it. It's a bit difficult to build wheels, uh, do it on skates. Well, we can in the Netherlands, but then we have to always go to the ice rink and. So we build wheels which have counter-rotating wheels to kill the gyro. So we are 99.5% gyro free. And we have a little bit negative trail because the contact porch point is not a point but a patch. And to be sure, we measured the patch and we saw, well, it's not larger than four millimeters and we're dead sure that there's no positive. Trend. Left, you see the predicted eigenvalues. Right, you see from the measured model, they're sort of alike. So Proof of the pudding is to eat, so we went to the gym, we propelled the thing, we hit it sideways, and what do we see? The whole thing stays upright, so self-stable indeed, right? Okay, so a bike can be self-stable, but more enigmatic is actually the following question, how do we control a bike? So how, how do we stay upright? How do we balance? How we, eh? and, and if you ask people, everybody has, oh yeah, I'm, I lean and I steer. And, I, and uh, you see a famous person here, and that's my daughter. And I, I used her to observe, how, how do you learn how to ride a bike? Right? By steer and balance. But what do you do it? Well, a, bit, a question for you. So if you ride your bike and you want to make a right turn, uh, what do you do? To turn right, you have to steer. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about it. Yeah. So to turn, you're riding on your bike. You want to go to the right. What do you do with your handlebars? Unmute your mic and uh, give an answer. What do you, you do? Can, you can turn your steer or you can just tilt a bit your bike. Okay, and in which direction do you steer? Right. Okay, and how do you lean then? Uh, 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 if you do not steer, what do you do with your body? You said you either steer or you, you, you lean with your body. How do you lean your body? Yeah, I tilt a bit my body on the right, on the direction of the turn that I want to follow. Okay, any other ideas? Uh, by the way, I'm not doing what you say. I'm both, I'm, I, I never do that, but maybe I can apply. Better to um, the right. If you want to turn right, uh, you originally you can actually I will tilt myself like the whole bike towards right a bit, and or possibly the other way to do this is to turn a bit left so the bike starts tilting right, and then I turn right. Yeah, that's something I want to do here. The big the big problem in cycling is that that you have a bicycle. And the bicycle is, has two contact points on the ground, right? Meaning that the thing is always falling over. And you, you, they're, they're, you cannot push against the world to, to get you in some, 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 some upright configuration or some lean configuration. Now, why do you want that? Well, if you go around the corner, you need to lean the bike a little bit. Otherwise, you will fall out of the corner. So you have to lean a bit into the corner with the bike. But how do you get the bike lean? I mean, and I'm, with the bike, I mean the bicycle plus the rider, the whole system. You want to lean that whole system. Now, um, 
if you sit on a bike and you move your upper body, the bike will go the other way. So it's always like, like this, right? Because around the contact line, you cannot exert any torques. So you can, you can move your upper body and the bike will lean, but, but for the rest, nothing much happens with the, the, net lean, the netto lean of the complete system eh, for the central mass for the whole system. Whereas you want to move the whole central, the central mass for the whole system you want to lean. With. However, you have a powerful instrument, and that is your handlebars. Because with the handlebars, you can move your contact points. So if you want to lean to the right, well, you have an unstable system. So what do you do? If I want to have to lean to the right, then I steer to the left, right? I steer a little bit to the left, I will fall over to the right, and then I let go of the handlebars, and I will get into a gentle turn. And that's exactly what we see. So briefly steer to the left, then let go to the right. Here you see a simulation, and really I steer a little bit to the left, and then bang, the bike falls immediately over to the right, and I will get into the right point. I think I also had a slow motion thing where you see it in slow motion. I move forward, and then after one second, I steer a little bit to the left, and you see uh, the bike starts falling over to the right. And that is the way. Now, that is maybe also the reason why uh, why we have to learn how to ride hey, you, you cannot go to a shop and buy a bike and say okay mount the bike okay how do we balance or fair steer to the fall to the left steer to the left, steer to the left. yeah i understand i'm gonna do it because it, it feels counterintuitive then the question is of course how do we humans do that uh, what do we exactly do what do we need information sensorial information and how do we steer because some people may say, oh, I can ride without hands. Yeah, of course you can ride without hands, but in the end you have to steer the bike, eh? you have to move your contact points, so you have to operate the steering. And if you have your hands off the handlebars and you do your upper body lean, then you have an indirect way of steering because the upper body lean will give, give a, a lean of the rear frame. Eh? If you do this, then the frame will do like this, so, mm -hmm. because the yeah, contact line stays on the ground. And if you do that, if a bike leans, then it will also start steering. So yes, by moving your upper body, you can operate in an indirect way to steer. Uh, so you can ride without hands, but you're still steering. Okay, the question of how do we steer in balance was already somewhat older. In the 70s at Delft, there was uh, done some studies on a, on a bicycle simulator to see what is the effect of um, Alcohol and drugs, yeah, was really the Netherlands, uh, marijuana, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, cycling. And the question came from the Ministry of Transport. They wanted to know, uh, should we say it's prohibited to ride intoxicated on your bike, yes or no? Well, of course, we need solid research first. So there was a whole line of people waiting to be a test person to do this, eh, because it was free vodka and free marijuana. And then we tested with and without. And then the outcome was yes. Uh, if you are intoxicated, then you should not ride the bike because when you're intoxicated, your, your feedback gains grow and your system becomes unstable and your, your, um, your delay or your sensory delay also increases enormously and you're always to live with different ways. And so too late, too, fat, too, too hard makes it very unstable. After that, nothing much happened. The, in cycling, in motorcycles it did because there were a lot of accidents and in the US, uh, uh, David Weir was one of the first who started looking at what do riders do on motorbikes, who can, how can we make them more safe. Still, we wanted to know what do you do exactly, how, how do you balance, how do you steer, so we equipped the bike with, with sensors and cameras and then, um, well, as you can see, we borrowed this from uh, from a TV show where they, they, they mounted a camera on the rear frame looking at the rider and said, oh, that's cool. And you see relative motions of the rider with respect to the frame. We collect data like forward speed, lean rate, steer rate, and all the, that stuff, cadence. And uh, just a ride into town, right? just the infrastructural things with a roundabout and traffic lights and crossings. And this is a, a piece of such a video. Yeah, you see the earl, earl, earth moving, of course. And, and this is what happens when you, when, you, when you go real outside. Of course, we want to do real cycling, but there's a, there's a problem if you go outside. You have chasing dogs, uh, uh, you have to do all kind of crazy things. So that it's not a very controlled experiment. So we went then to a more controlled environment 
And this is like a big treadmill, three by five meters, has a very high speed. It's at the Free University in Amsterdam, the top floor, and then we can cycle on the thing. Unfortunately, you can also only cycle forward. If you try to make a turn, you're sort of lost, or the treadmill loses you. Big question is, of course, how does it feel like to ride on a treadmill? And yes, I'm old and uh, I'm not so, so I'm a bit clumsy, but I know how to cycle, but it feels very strange. So you really have to focus, you have to look into infinity here because you have no optical flow and or you can look at your front wheel which is moving. Uh, but after after a while you, you get used to that and you can learn how to cycle. Here you see uh, one of these experiments. Uh, this is not a, a tow road, this is just a safety road. I'm cycling on a treadmill at various forward speeds. We measure all the data and again the camera mounted to the rear frame. And if you, if you look especially at slow speed, what's going on, you would say, oh, he starts moving his upper body relative to the rear frame. Well, the, the guy is sitting like a stiff Dutch guy on a bike. What is going on? Stiff old guy. No, no, no. I, I had the feeling I was doing a relaxed balancing. And it turns out that, so apparently you, you, you stay, you steer a lot and you do not move your upper body, but you do use your knees. Notice how the knees are moving relative to the rear frame. So for an extra balance at low speed, you don't use your upper body, but you use steering normally, and then on top of that, your knees and some in some experiments. Anyway, we, we move that into more scientific thing with a lot of sensors, uh, meet, uh, measuring all these motions, capturing all these motions, reconstructing it in MATLAB again, doing principal component analysis to find out what are major and minor motions, how do they change the speed, and that also confirmed all our beliefs. That like, yes, uh, you, you balance a bike by steering, and the upper body is, is very ineffective. Okay, so now we know how, how we can focus on, on, on this control. Your output signal is uh, steering. Input is, of course, difficult, eh? all kinds of sensors. Now you must say, oh, that's that's nice research. They're having a lot of fun in the lab. And yes, we had. We had a lot of fun. We still have a lot of fun in the lab with this. And that's mainly um, because, of, but that's also because a bicycle is such a nice object because it's, uh, it is not the size of microns or, or, or weights tons. It's, it's all human size. Uh, uh, it's, uh, the bicycle is about one meter. Uh, it weighs about 20, uh, 20 kilograms. Uh, everything has a, a human size. So it's it's very easy to work on. So that's, that's also one of the beauties. Okay, relevance to society. So all very nice, but what are we going to do with that? Well, it turns out that cycling is very dangerous. So if a, peop a person of my age would ask uh, uh, us, um, is it healthy to cycle? Then we say, no, 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 don't do that. Stop, stop immediately cycling. Because the statistics tell us that if you're above uh, 60, then then you probably will get be seriously injured or, or uh, and the chances of uh, death in traffic are a lot higher than, and even more in, in cycling in total, uh, the number of seriously injured and some number of deaths are rising every time, every year opposed to uh, those in, in other other modes of traffic, and I can mostly by, by saying in cars, for instance, but all other modes of traffic, it's going down, and we want to make our life safer. However, in cycling, it's going up. Of course, one part is exposure, more people are cycling, but still, it's a bad message. And it turns out that 80% of these accidents are elderly, and 75% are single vehicle accidents. So they do not get run over by a truck or a bus or whatever, they just fall over. And in this falling over is, of course, the vehicle dynamics and control a very important aspect. So yes, um, it, is, it is a relevance to society. So what did we do? We tried to make the bike more stable for the elderly. So we do active lateral stability control. So we have a bike and we have motors and sensors on the handlebars. And what do they do? They just measure that the bike is falling over and then they steer. Just like in the Lego Mindstorms bike, but now a more serious one, right? And the big questions are, of course, like, hey, but how does that feel? Because somebody, somebody in the case of this your computer, is, is pulling on your handlebars and how does it scheme still get into a corner? So we built the thing and then 
and then you ride it and then look it feels like a normal bike and you can still get around the corners and you can steer and and you actually think oh well it's like a normal bike but the moment you switch it off you feel like oh, oh, oh wow it, it was really healthy so this is one of the applications we do um and of course we can measure all kind of numbers like steer rate and power spectral density and so on and make theoretical things like, oh yeah, with this shared control, the steer system becomes more stable, and we can also see that in the signals, but oh, it's just work. Other projects. Yeah, okay. sure. Young anymore, and it seems to be it seems that I'm never going to learn it. So can you please build me your, some kind of assisting device that's helped me to do the manual and wheeling? <laughs> manual, perhaps. <laughs> can, you, can you think about, you know, what could help me to learn it? I already built the device to my home. Still, still I don't learn it. Also, I'm uh, uh, willing to accept uh, any other advices from students. So please let me know how can I learn it. Uh, Really? You mean a monocycle? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. then there's a one kind of like yeah. special thing which is called manual, and you do the wheeling, but you don't do the pedaling. You're just kind of like hanging in the, in the rear of your bike. Oh, yeah. I see those guys on 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 mopeds do that here on yep, the electric yep, yep, yep. And Same thing, and same thing, but in bikes. Yeah. Well, I think I it has to do with uh, fear. <laughs> Okay, so I need to take some bills rather yes, than having yes. the technical device. Take some water. Okay. You have to get rid of your fear because okay. uh, the system dynamics is not so fast. Mm. And to, to show you that uh, also, one of the things I do when I um, have to balance at low speed is I'm, gonna, I'm getting out of my saddle and I'm going to stand, stand on my pedal so I'm more upright, right? Mm. Yeah, right. And that means. A longer stick has a slower mode of, mm -hmm. of, of slower frequency, and you will notice that you are so much more in control. So it's two things because your center of mass is higher, and the second thing is which is important: you are not connected to your bike anymore. So it's very easy to move your bike, and all mountain bikers know that. They, okay. You have to get out of the saddle when it's getting complex, right? So that is one thing. Getting high makes it very slow and therefore operatable. And the other thing is, well, with the wheelie, yeah, the only danger is falling backwards, right? Yeah, but I think. Horrible yeah. <laughs> because you will really get hurt. You, you, you cannot put your hands backwards. I think that's the fear part. And I don't know, a helmet or? All right, some protection perhaps. Protection, yeah. OK, thank but you. It, it, should, it should not be so hard, actually. OK, so I'm, I'm, this is going to be my uh, a project for coming summer, so I'm going to put an effort to learn it. So we'll see. I'm going to give you a report how well it goes. Yeah, I always like the the things you do and uh, and, and like to copy that. But in this case, <laughs> I think I, I won't. <laughs> so okay. I won't. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I want to finalize by showing some 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 cool projects. We also, well, at least I think they're cool projects. We we do so. As I uh, oh, I have to go forward. Sorry. Um, various other projects, so it's, it's not about consumer cycling. Uh, we're also busy in our lab to, to build a bicycle simulator. because we discovered that the handlebars are very light, but the forces you feel on the handlebars really help you in balancing. And we discovered that with our steer by wire and steer assist bike. Uh, when we change that force feedback we had, because in a in a steer by wire bike, we, we can do that. Still in the progress. The other thing is shimmy. That's a, a, a very bad behavior of a bike. And uh, modern electric bikes have a tendency to show that due to the step through frame, the higher speed, and you don't, and because you don't put, put your hands really very firm on the handlebars. 
uh, we, we made a nice mathematical model and that I think we have some connection problems. Image stuck. Jared is back. No, he's not back. Yeah, so so seems that there's a little bit of technical technical difficulties. Let me send an uh, now it is completely gone. There was a break a little while ago, another break, and that too I was wondering if it was my my problem or something else. Okay, so let me not to share your screen. So, uh, I'm getting messages from you. So just a second, I'm gonna send the watch up to Arend. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, I got no responses from um, what's up yet i see that he's not reading my message or so maybe he's completely offline okay let me see if i can have a connection to our end mm -hmm. no not possible so i don't know well, the good news is this, that, you know, that slide and that uh, subject matter that he was about to explain to us was the last subject matter. So I guess with, you know, we kind of the, pretty much uh, reaching the end of the lecture anyways. Now, uh, what follows? And this is a little bit of information what happens on next week, Wednesday. So we're going to have one more lecture that will be delivered by me, and it's going to be an attempt to summarize these visiting lectures and giving you a little bit of a little bit of information how to prepare yourself to read an exam and then uh, there's going to be one extra lecture which is about the career counseling and that is not uh, a mandatory lecture so this that lecture is designed for those of you that are interested to learn about you know what are my perspectives about the career counseling and what I might advise you to find your position in, in Finnish industry or academia in general. So I hear nothing from Martin. So I guess that this is, uh, you know, that the lecture was uh, designed to be 45 minutes and it's already took more than that. So I guess with that, we're simply going to close this meeting. And we will see you again on um, next week, Wednesday at... Um, 1215 and that by the way is not going to be through the uh these teams but it's going to be via um, youtube like usually the lectures are delivered okay so um now Arden is back so let's hear so you're back thank you Aki. So what so what happened? So there was a some kind of connection problem in your end. There was probably some connection problem, Aki. Uh, okay. I, I, I did not hear your sound. Yeah, we lost you completely. So we lost you completely. So um, any chance that you can uh, go I back can, to I your... I can rewind. Uh, no, no. You, you know, there was a... Let me think. It was... We were in a... You said that this is the last subject matter that you wanted to explain. And uh, then um, you started to introduce it and then you, you were completely gone. 
So, uh, uh, so can you, so can you take, can you share your screen again so we can take a look at the slides that you were in? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, do, I'm, I'm now busy trying to read on the screen. I'm gonna share, sorry. Yeah. Uh, OBS, yeah. Okay. Um, yep, yep. We were. Uh, you could go a bit further here. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me let me get this out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, a bit further relevance to society. We had right. And yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Much. Uh, yep. Yep. You can go further. So. Oh, wait sorry. on there. We have the technology. Sorry, I feel it's. Uh, uh, I have to wait a little bit for the 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 circle of death. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It will, it will come. So now what happened to your uh, oh, Apple keynote. computer? Apple computer is not willing to cooperate. Yeah. It is thinking something. Yeah, it's just doing something. I, I don't know. What. Uh, also, I need to check, like, if, how is your voice? Is it? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, your voice is okay. So it's going to through the YouTube as well. Okay, I'll, I'll start the keynote again, and then hopefully we'll get that back. So we see your desktop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it will come in a second. The keynote starts again. The, the okay. keynote was, was <clears throat> crashed for some reason. I have to have a bit of patience here. Okay. Yep, no yeah. worries. So how come? Is it this something that uh, that Apple mm -hmm. computer is not reliable one? Oh, is yeah, that not the, okay, okay, not the right kind uh, of conclusion. Yeah, I think it was a PowerPoint something because you know it was unwilling to change the slide in your presentation. Yeah, yeah. 